Hi, this is Tom for PokerVOP.com and welcome to part two of my series on Hot Lemon Omaha here at Tony Bear. Um, so yeah, I've gone over the first video. Um, I feel like the only important hand that I feel we misplayed was the King Jack 10 8 three bet spot. Um, there is some merit to checking turn, but it's uh, vastly superior to have just bet turn. I think we've just had a bit of a brain fart there and uh, we're going to be ahead of the vast majority of his range. We have about 30-35% against the times he has the nut part of range, which to be honest, we fully expect him to have raised flop with, so that part of range isn't such a concern. And yeah, I think we just let him back into a hand and um, was entirely kind of a, 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 a mistake on our end. Um, you know, important thing of poker is reviewing sessions, going over what you have done and what you could do better and putting your hands up and saying uh, that you are fallible, that you will make mistakes and that you will learn from them. Um, so I'm going to put that in the comment section of the first video. And if you haven't seen that um, and you watched the first video, uh, then a quick like uh, footnote to it. Um, but I think we, we got that hand. Uh, slightly wrong. Um, as played, I actually am fine with the value bet on River. I think that was that was fine. But the point is that the vast, vast majority of the money should have been in on the turn anyway. Um, so we have two PLO 10 tables on this uh, on the go for this video. I think it's going to be interesting to see um, kind of like how different stakes act um, and the differences we find between PLO 10, PLO 25, and PLO 50. Um, and yeah, so I think it would just be be interesting to see how that happens. And um, we also have a three-handed table, four-handed table. The slight difference in dynamics we have versus uh, full six max, and what adjustments we should be making, and how that kind of like affects our play style and indeed hand rankings. So with that being said, let's jump into the action. Hopefully, we find some interesting spots. Uh, aces on the right-hand table probably qualifies as that. Um, and we're going to start off with 3-bet. They're not enormously connected and brilliant, but I feel 3-betting aces at small stakes is just about always going to be profitable. Uh, if opponent 4-bets, we'll just go with it. If we happen to take a flop, then we do have two nut flush blockers. And in a spot, we have an overpair and nut flush blocker. We are going to be betting. We're going to be defending the jacks. I don't love being 3-bet here. Um, but I think three-handed, this is going to be just about okay. Also, top tip, flopping the nut straight with a flush redraw is generally going to be reasonable. Uh, we actually have... <laughs> we've actually decreased it in the hand rank ranking here when we turn the flush. We do have a set of the toppest variety to redraw. on. I do feel he bets the vast majority of his flushes on flop, though. So we're going to try and extract some value off some two pairs. Um, maybe see if he gets stubborn. The raise here doesn't make a massive amount of sense, to be truthful. Um, so I'm going to be calling, checking the river, it'd be very strange for my opponent to have checked a nut flush on flop. I think we just call off and expect to see the ace high blocker a good chunk of time. Um, or, 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 or air. That's the other option. I was really expecting to see the, uh, the ace high blocker there. Um, but to be honest, it really doesn't make much sense for my opponent to have checked a nut flush. Um, okay, the flop does represent a range that's going to hit me more than him, but something like a pair and flush draw there is just going to have so much equity versus me. Um, you know, it's... Going to be flipping versus my two pairs, beating my pairs, and absolutely crushing my um, weaker flush draws. Going to call the straight. 6-8 uh, gets there as well. Do you think my opponent's probably likely to try and bluff me back at this point? Or attempt to, sorry, rather than bluff me back, is it going to attempt to try and win money back here? So this is an added dynamic. We are still calling our straight. Board pairing is not spectacular, although that really should favor me more than him at this point. And we have ace three and he was free rolling me. He didn't hit the free roll. Very charitable of him. I think we play the hand fine. Uh, if we start bloating pot, we start tightening range. And it's generally not going to be particularly good for us because we're either going to see higher straights or hands like that that are free rolling us. 
one thing we're going to see at smaller stakes is a lot of limping. Um, I guess this is just about okay to see a flop with. It's not stunning. Uh, the worry with a pair of sevens is we're rarely going to make a top set. We don't have a nut flush possible. That being said, we can potentially make some straights. Left hand table, a nut suit is probably going to be reasonable enough to open buttons with. I think when we're drawing to the weaker end of a straight on a board that already contains two flush cards, it's actually just going to be folded. Uh, the lead is somewhat weird. Um, to be honest, when we have a gut shot and backdoor flush draw, I think when my opponent leads into two people and is willing to play the hand out of position versus two people, that's going to be showing me a good amount of strength and we're just going to be folding, I think, especially in a spot where it actually conceivably hits the value part of my range. So folding is fine. My inner knit has cost me some money on the right hand table, but I think long term it's a fine fold. Gonna be ISO raising, which is something I'm gonna be looking to do versus limps. Trying to take hands heads up, trying to play hands in position with hands that have you know reasonable potential. We're not gonna be doing it with just junk, but uh, reasonably strong hands and just trying to kind of exploit someone playing too wide a range. And having said, this is gonna be a flop that's gonna hit my opponent's range far better than my own, including uh, the small blinds calling range. He's gonna have a lot of mid pair uh, like mid pairs mid connected hands that kind of stuff which just crushes this range so we're going to be checking here and trying to realize some equity turn the king queen nine draw with the bottom pair you have to worry about some flush cards but when my opponent's offering me just under three to one we are going to be calling trying to realize equity on this river it's not the greatest river i'm just gonna be following Going to be opening a weakish ace, but it, we again we have the button, and again we're three handed. I think against two people that are pretty active, uh, just naked bluffing is, is, is really not going to show much of a return. Um, so we're just going to be checking, try and turn a pair, try and turn a draw. Gonna check our double gut shot. River and ace. I doubt one pair is good, but showdown is probably the best option. Again, makes no sense to turn the hand into a bluff. I don't see any weak two pair folding here. So let's just. Yeah, I mean, I really don't see top two folding. <laughs> Nor should it, for that matter. Uh, the rainbow ace. It's kind of close. You can go either way on this. Um, like if we even had one suit with it, it would be significantly strong. Double suited, we can even three bet. Um, I think when rainbow, we're actually going to fold when out of position. It's very tight, but I think it's fine. I think it's just going to be better spots at small stakes. Um, in games where the edge is much slimmer, then playing hands like that is actually going to be um, significantly more attractive just because you know, if we start folding too often, we're, we're exploitable. But I think on small stakes, people just aren't going to be exploiting us often enough so we can start folding weaker parts of our range and just... Uh, just playing very, very value heavy in terms of style. First three bet we've seen for quite some time. Hand doesn't play fantastically versus three bets. That said, if Arno does call, we're getting a good enough price to call. Um, if he decides to fold, which I'd be amazed if he had, we would have overfolded. But when getting three to one, we are concerned that we don't have enough suit, but we are going to peel and evaluate. We do have the flush blocker here, which has some potential. Uh, we do have top hair, we do have a gut shot. We're gonna be checking flop and seeing what my opponents want to do. I'm gonna start off with a call. I think Armo can bet reasonably wide when the original razor has checked. Gonna check again and probably fold to further aggression. We would have bet any spade, bet any five most probably better king but better than eight four would be a really awkward one and he's not exactly slowing down he's not sizing down really either so it's kind of weird uh, my opponent can have some weird two pairs he's also sizing it for a river shove and calling down with one pair of hand just isn't going to show a profit there are a number of turns where we can take it away from him 
that's just not going to be one of them, unfortunately. Good open, Jax. Quite a polarized hand, so we're really looking to flop a jack. Hasn't happened. Let's just check through. Reasonably connected board. Again, favors calling ranges versus raising ranges. As I struggle with the English language. Again, if we're folding hands like um, Ace Queen Jack 3, Rainbow, we're certainly going to be folding this kind of hand. Gonna be folding. Quite happy being the tightest player on the table. We're still not playing so tight that we can be exploitable, but we're also not gonna be getting ourselves in post flop spots with third nut flushes, fourth nut flushes, second nut straights, that kind of stuff. At least not uh, with any great frequency. And we're playing the sort of top part of range, the value part of range. You know, it's, it still will happen sometimes as evidenced by the H3 hand earlier, but. The point is we're reducing the frequency of it, so we're reducing the frequency of the awkward spots that we can find ourselves in. Both tables appear to be eating into my camera time right now. And again, I mean, I don't need to be playing every hand, I can just fold. Um, times that we're at bottom of range. I think especially on a site such as this where the use of HUDs isn't allowed, um, that you're not going to see the same people time and time again and they're not going to have stats on you. Um, you know, this is the first time I've ever played these stakes on this site. So I'm or at least to my knowledge, it's the first time I've, I've played it. If, it. if I did, it was a very, very long time ago. Um, so my opponents really aren't going to know me. They're not going to know my tendencies and, and vice versa. Um, although I have a reasonably good feel for population tendencies at different stakes. Um, and that's where note taking is going to get particularly important. Um, but, uh, you know, my opponents aren't going to know that I'm, I'm sort of playing a very value heavy style. They're not going to pick up on it particularly quickly. I'm going to be checking the tens back here on a pretty awful flop, truthfully. Um, it's a hand that flops moderately well, but it's done pretty spectacularly awfully on this spot. Hopefully we can find some reasonably playable hands soon. Uh, again, this is a hand that just looks far better than it actually is. Um, disconnected, makes too many low straights, makes too many low flushes. Just leads to enormous numbers of problems. Uh, so these two seem to be particularly live. Um, as we saw with someone showing down fives, they're going to be playing far too many hands, two wider ranges out of position. The usual kind of misdemeanors that you would expect from low stakes. Going to be opening the button with a reasonably good connected queen. And I'm going to be defending here with a moderately connected jack. Flopping a gut shot on a backdoor flush draw. I do you think we can bet pick this up a decent chunk of time on a not so coordinated board? I'm going to check the 4 3 here. Um, even though we flop bottom two, it does lend itself to a reasonable number of problems on turns and rivers. Get a check back turn here. Would have been a favourable turn card, a pretty awful river. Don't see my opponent folding to any type of raise particularly. And we're going to bet our two pair for value. We also pick up a gut shot on turn as well. We're only really worried about hands like 8-9, nine, 9-4 nine, and 9-3 are really bizarre combos if our opponents have them. I suppose 5-6 gets there, but I expect that to bet flop. Ace-5 gets there, I expect that to bet flop. 4-3 is good, nice.
Uh, Ace-Jack-10-7 is not a hand I would three bet versus UTG in a six-handed game. Uh, in effect, our opponent's open cutoff though, so do think that's going to play reasonably well, um, especially in tables where our opponents are opening far too wide. Top pair and flush draw seems like a plan, seems like a bet call off type of plan. And we're just going to be calling the connected king. Interesting, just call. Cool. Doesn't make a phenomenal amount of sense. Moderately worried about 8-9, which can be in range. That being said, two pair and not flush draw, it's just going in. And we win. It's never a bad thing. Uh, my opponent chasing the 8-5 draw for the entire lot is unconscionably bad. But um, again, plain small stakes. Mistakes will be seen. Mistakes are not particularly unexpected. Um, but even if you assume that I am some lunatic overplaying kings, you're still not doing particularly well with a bare ace high there, sir. But just kind of like an illustration of uh, the kind of mistakes you'll see at these stakes on this site and others for that matter. Um, and just kind of like how you can exploit them by just basically playing your value hands very, very hard. Um, and just effectively waiting for value spots, not really screwing around too much, and then just sort of striking when, when you happen to have a hand. Your opponents aren't really making adjustments and thinking, hang on, he hasn't really been particularly active in the last 10 minutes. Maybe he has something, they just pay off, which, you know, it's not a bad thing. I'm not complaining about it, far from it, and I wouldn't complain about it if I played in these games long term, but it would be something I'd note, it would be an adjustment I would make, um, you know, to, to exploit that play style. Really looking for Ran to rebuy on the left hand table. I mean, I'm okay playing heads up, but I think for the purpose of uh, an educational video, it's probably going to be better if it gets three handed, but it doesn't look like it will. So I guess we'll continue heads up for the last 10 minutes of this video. Um, obviously, ranges change again. Um, and I mean, I suppose it's useful for the purpose of table starting, which, you know, is a thing when you're playing cash games, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's obviously ranges are going to be wider, so we're going to be doing um, significantly wider stuff, and we can't really play a purely value-heavy strategy heads up because we'll just be folding far too much. Um, we're going to be leading spots where we have reasonable equity versus ranges, such as flush draw pair and gut shot, um, which we might be, which we almost certainly would be check calling in five hundred and six hundred games. Um, but hand rankings are obviously going to go for significantly more in spots like this, and we're just going to be. Um, you know, playing them far more sort of face up and just aggressively. Uh, we're going to be continuing here. Um, doesn't make much sense to just give up on what is a relatively brick turn. We lose to exactly one flush. My opponent can have it. If he does have it, he's going to raise river. I will sigh, I will fold, and bang my head against the brick wall. But we are going for value. Don't get value. Never mind. Kings. Gonna be a raise, especially when suited. Uh, they're not fantastically connected, but heads up, that doesn't make such a difference, truthfully. Um, again, this is a spot in a normal three-handed game I probably wouldn't be betting, just given how connected it is. I think heads up, we're just gonna bet pick this up enough of the time to make it justifiable. Um, I don't necessarily want to get called here. I mean, there's times I get called and I have the best hand, but bet picking up is just gonna show a reasonable profit long term. Let me check in my ace back here. It's a relatively fluid board. I don't, I can't get three streaks off my hand. Uh, first time he's raised in a while, but we do have a moderately good hand. I'm just gonna take the ace to show down. Chopping's fine. Just a gut shot on the left hand table. I mean, I suppose I just turned top pair. Excuse me. Uh, but we're still going to be checking. New player on the right-hand table. Um, hopefully he joins the left-hand table as well, but that doesn't always happen. We are going to be calling, given my opponent check flop. Doesn't really make much sense for him suddenly to start betting turn. We end up rivering trips. We were calling just about all... Well, we were calling all river bets. Um, if we don't think his line makes sense on turn, 
then it surely doesn't make sense on river. Can I, can I just about defend the jacks on the left hand table? And flopping top pair and NFD, a few backdoor straight draws, going to be better than the left hand table. Checking jacks through here. Picking up a gut shot as well, but yeah, truthfully, it's not doing stunningly well. I am just going to see if we can find another table running, but unfortunately there isn't one. A bit frustrating. Was going to swap one out if there was a nice four or five hundred table running, but it um, doesn't seem to be. So we're going to be opening considerably wider on the button in a heads up scenario. Um, which is fairly reasonable. We're going to be betting our two pair here. Um, it's just enough turns and rivers that are going to scare us. If we get raised, we can make an easy fold. Um, it's a moderately connected board, but he's going to be calling a really, really wide range. So it doesn't necessarily mean just because it's connected that he's going to hit it. If we're playing against like top 25, top 30% of range, then yes, it's far more likely he hits it. But in heads up spot and against a very loose player, He's going to be playing more like 80% of range, which is not going to hit the board anything like as frequently. So hey, we're just going to be sort of just making little probe bets, picking up when we can. And um, if we happen to start getting serious action back and serious resistance, that's when we're going to reconsider where we are and reconsider where his range is. Don't mind the fact he's limping. Makes things nice and cheap for me went out of position which is fine again small pairs like this that have just flopped terribly totally fine with taking the showdown occasionally i get a free win which is awesome free wins are always nice but um not expecting to but also not expecting it to be a profitable bet on my end to try and bluff either so we're not going to pretty sexy hand on the button Getting 3-bet, there's an argument for 4-betting truthfully, but it is the first time he's 3-bet, so we're just going to defend. That's quite disappointing. Not much we can do other than fold here, really. Floating doesn't make any sense. There really aren't any turns we're going to enjoy the sight of either, barring exactly an offsuit 10. So, nice answer. It is possible my opponent has suddenly realized that aggression is the way to go, in which case, not exactly the worst outcome for me. Probably means he's going to be overplaying ranges in an aggressive manner, which, hey, that's not terrible either from my point of view. Nope, back to the limp, okay. Um, I just think isoing weak kings here out of position is just blowing a pot and not really achieving much, so we're just going to be playing this quite passively. I do have a deuce as well. Um, don't expect my opponent to show up for four too frequently. I mean, I guess it's conceivable, but cross that bridge if we ever come to it. Really don't like opening many four flush hands, but ace king is going to be one of them. Somehow I flop a flush draw. Um, needless to say, there are. <coughs> Excuse me. Needless to say, there are fewer flush cards out there, but still with a gut shot, over pairs and NFD, we are going to be betting. We've also been bet picking up a very high percentage of the time, so that's quite likely to happen anyway. But if we happen to get called, we've got reasonable possibilities of making our hand and then trying to extract value. Hmm. Pair of gut shot. Don't really see much of a reason to do much about it. Probably defend once and kind of just see if we happen to connect. Conceivably might shut down when called. Not a stunning card from my point of view. It really shouldn't help his range though, but it does appear he has just made a hand. So. Sure. Third pair doesn't seem like a great call now.
two incredibly small stacks on the left hand table. Uh, sorry, on the right hand table. One day I will learn my left and my right. Um, yeah, I mean, generally in any form of poker, if we see small stacks, we're just going to assume they're on the weaker side. Flopping top pair in an NFD, we're going to be betting on the heads up table. I should get called for a change, which is somewhat surprising. We do have the blockers to a straight, so I'm going to bet once more, unless led into, which I don't think happens too often. Um, I can start applying some pressure to the weaker two pairs, the 6-7s, six, 8-6 six kind of combos. I still have redraws as well, if need be. Sure. Give the call. Some potential. Double gut shot and a flush draw. I think when checked here, we are going to be betting turn and betting river on just about every run out. He's shown a good amount of weakness. We're going to try and exploit it. It's kind of difficult for him to have much of a check calling range there. I mean, maybe jack 10, but that's got a very tough time of calling rivers when unimproved anyway. Going to be opening on the round table, which is a table I realize I haven't played much of a hand on for the last five minutes, but let's start out with a nice little raise with a nice little hand. Short stack decides to lead in the spot. I have ace high, nice hand short. Not really sure why he's potting. Going to be calling my Jackson gut shot. Could conceivably hit a three as well. Just going to be calling my ace king jack. Um, if we had the ace high flush draw, it would be a strong candidate for a 3 bet. I'm going to be calling once more here and just evaluating what he does on river. The 5 is actually moderately good in that we are now counterfeiting his 10 nines. Two pairs. And we're going to be calling here. Don't love the fact he uh, has actually bet all three streets here. Um, I guess conceivably he could have queens, could have kings. The 5 is difficult for him to have, but I guess it's possible. I mean, as played, I guess we have to pull down. He hit running fives. Nice answer. Somewhat frustrating. And to the surprise of no one, he has aces. Not really sure what tens we're doing, though. Yeah, I mean, running fives is pretty much the only hand that makes any sense there. If it is a value hand and not a bluff. Um, He's going to have a significant number of bluffs, though, so I do think the cooldown is reasonable, especially heads up. Backdoor flush draw, top pair and gut shot, we're going to bet. Probably check back for showdown here and call on bricks, seems fine. Somewhat of a brick. Ah, uh, he actually checks. I mean, the pros and cons of betting. The pro is I probably have the best hand by this point. The con is I don't think I can ever extract value from it, so... I guess check is reasonable. Not really sure how soundproof this, re this room is, but if you just heard a cackle, that is my other half. So apologies for that if you heard it. She's watching a rom-com. It's probably terrible. She thinks it's funny. Feel free to leave in the comments how particularly annoying you find the laugh or how distracting you think it is. I will pass it on. Uh, when checked, I'm going to be betting on a turn that helps us significantly. We have a number of two pairs, a number of flushes. I actually have an eight now. Um, I think against the passive line, I'm going to bet. And the reason I'm going to bet is one for a blocker bet, two to extract value off a king, which has checked. And it's three to prevent me getting a pot size bet and having a decision as to whether to call versus hands like five, four, and ten, nine. So it's a kind of combo bet. Um, Sometimes we just have the best hand, which is awesome, but um, it's basically to prevent me having a god awful decision on a river card, which I think by checking, I open the door to get a horrendous decision. And anytime I get raised there, I can just very happily say, you know what, I, I just don't have the best hand. Um, so this is actually going to wrap up the video. We're coming up to the half an hour point. Leaving with quads seems like a good way to go. I'm going to be honest. The question is, how on earth do I get value off quads? <laughs> Um, well, I ended the first video with a, with a, with a nice hand. Um, let's maybe end the, the, the next one. I'm actually going to check this back. I haven't been checking back much. Might look suspicious, but I think by betting, I basically, there's no, there's no part of his range that can call. So, um, 
Let's maybe hope he sort of decides to monkey around, maybe. I mean, I guess I could try and get called by like uh, eights, nines, maybe, potentially. Sad times. Oh well, hitting the daily quads on the last hand. So um, this wraps up this video. As before, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, feedback, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, I check it every day or so. So uh, when I see it, I'll get back to you, hopefully as quickly and um, as helpfully as I can. Um, feel free to check out my Poker VIP page. Um, you know, check out my coaches page. That'd be awesome if you did. And um, you know, I also check that page. So if you drop me a message on that, I will get back to you. Um, and yeah. Uh, with that all being said, this has been Tom from PokerVIP.com and hopefully I'll see you for part three.